I'm Jonah from Singapore to Sakumono. It has been proved time and time again that there is a bit of resilience. And that is all that we need to weather any storm and triumph over any adversity. How else would Rwanda, a country that just a few years ago was on the very face of genocide, turn itself around and become the model nation for social development on our continent? All it took to change was a little bit of elasticity. I oh, wish I could go on, but I can't. It's time for the news. My name is Koji Yangson. Good morning, Ghana 4. Hello and welcome to Join News at 6. The news is live on Joe 99.7 FM and hits 103.9 FM in Accra. In Kumasi, we are live on Love 99.5 FM and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions, including Jubilee and Sun City Radios, Keta Saboba, FM Saboba, and A1 Radio Bulgatanga. Get radio TV and online content on the MyJoyOnline.com interactive app for Android and iOS devices. This morning, President Kufado assures that the security agencies will be ready to deal with trouble ahead of the 2024 general election saying those seen brandishing weapons at the residence of former President Mahama will be unsuccessful in their agenda. That under my watch no person or group of persons no matter their political coloration will destabilize our country. It will not happen. And as we get ready for the Join News National Dialogue on Illegal Mining, we'll explore how some communities in the western regional towns of Takwa and Pristia are consuming food heavily contaminated with poisonous metals. And the people over there are not even aware of that, even though they are using for medicinal purposes, but they end up contaminating themselves. We have business and much later in the bulletin, Information Minister rejects U.S. travel advisory alert to LGBTQ travelers, disagrees with emerging threats warning amidst anti-LGBTQI legislation. As we disagree with them on that, we'll continue with what we believe is our governance principle. I am Amisi Nyamiche Thompson and details and now. President Kufadu says security agencies will be ready to deal with any trouble before, during and after the 2024 general election. His assurance comes after some supporters of the NDC were seen in a viral video brandishing machetes and other weapons at the residence of former president John Mahama last week. Now speaking at an outgoing church service for the moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana at Adenta, the president said the security agencies will deal with individuals or group seeking to destabilize the country. It is my earnest hope that the machetes and weapons brandished last week at the residence of the NDC's presidential candidate, the former President John Mahama, are not signs of things to come in the run-up to the 2024 elections. If it is, I can assure them that they will find no success with them. I want to state for the record that under my watch, no person or group of persons, no matter their political coloration, will destabilize our country, nor destroy the peace that all of us are enjoying. It will not happen. And here, President Ekufuadu, now to our election headquarters. It's a two-horse race between PR of the Energy Ministry, Kwesi Obeng Fosu, and Deputy CEO of the National Youth Authority, Akosia Menukozi, as the two battle to lead the NPP in the Adentan constituency. These two are in the fore running as the third candidate, Winfred Nati, a polling station chairman, struggles to catch up. As we begin our build-up to the NPP's parliamentary primaries in orphan constituencies, we shine the spotlight on the Adentan constituency. Kwesi Kwekwasanti of our political desk has more. The Adentan constituency remains one of the key battlegrounds in Ghana's political landscape. No member of parliament for Adentan has been re-elected since 2004 when the constituency was created. And as the NPP prepares to elect a candidate to represent it ahead of the crucial 2024 election, the race has become heated as three persons lock horns vying to lead their party 
to unseat the incumbent NDC MP Ademu Ramadan, PRO of the Energy Ministry, where Sio Bain Fosu believes he is the party's best bet towards attaining this goal. Number one indicates a leader. If you have chosen one, you're already in the league. It means you are one and all the others are behind you. I'm the one that can bring everybody together. In the history of Adenka, anytime we are united, anytime we come together, we win. As I said, we are winning this contest. Kwesio Bainfosu says he speaks and understands the language of delegates more than any of his contenders. He is facing an uphill task as he goes against Deputy CEO of the National Youth Authority, Akosia Menukozi. She wants to be the first female MP for Adentam. Everybody can come into the safety net of Kozi because she is welcoming, she's open and she hasn't, um, she didn't take part in any of the divisive games that existed in 2020. Let's give it to a female. Yes, there's been a parliamentary candidate who was female, but she didn't get the nod as a parliamentary candidate. And that was Kekwa Asante's report. Away from that, Supreme Court Judge Justice Emmanuel Yonikulendi has emphasized the crucial link between moral integrity and the administration of justice in the country. Justice Kulendi says individuals with depraved morality should not be entrusted with the responsibility of dispensing justice. He was speaking on the law Sunday while sharing insights on the topic Court of Competent Jurisdiction. He accepts. The ethical base, the core values, which being a person of high moral standing and proven character speak to that software whether you are sitting in the lowest court or in the highest court is the same denominator because a dishonest man should not come anywhere near the sanctuary of justice mm. even at the most basic level a person of depraved morality who is known among his peers to be of no good report cannot purport or pretend to administer justice because of the element of impartiality and the need to engender the confidence of the people who receive your verdict. Justice Emmanuel Yoni Kalendide, Judge of the Supreme Court. Now, I disagree with U.S. Travel Advisory Alert to LGBTQI travelers. That's according to Information Minister Kojo Oponkroma, rejecting claims there are emerging threats against the community if the anti-LGBTQ bill is passed in its present form. The United States government last week updated its Travel Advisory Alert to travelers coming to Ghana after its ambassador, Virginia Palmer, warned of a possible blacklisting and ban on Ghanaian businesses if the bill is passed in its present form. Speaking to the media and a crime formation, Minister Kojo Pankrumah insists that Ghana is a sovereign nation and it will not stick to its position on st- such matters. And we disagree with them on that. We disagree with them. Uh, we are a, 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 a sovereign nation. What are we going to do as a government? And as we disagree with them on that. We'll continue with what we believe is our governance principles. Now, scientists and researchers are warning that many communities in the western regional towns of Takwa and Pristia are consuming food heavily contaminated with poisonous metals left in the soil as a result of illegal mining. The situation poses potential health risks to individuals. In our series ahead of the Joy News National Dialogue on Illegal Mining, PAV and Sir Journalist of the Year, Erastus Asaridonko explores the link between these poisonous metals and food grown in these areas. Irresponsible mining generates tailings, a byproduct of the sluicing process in extracting the gold. These are done haphazardly without a recourse to environmental safety and protection. Consequently, the heavy metals in the tailings are released into water bodies, the soil, food chain, surface and groundwater. But how does this affect food grown for the market in Ghana? There's an actual link between heavy metal found in the soil and food. Dr. Albert Kobna-Mensa is a research scientist with a PhD in heavy metals in mine-affected tailings and soil, forest, water and land degradation. His work involved the testing and studying of heavy metal contamination of soil in the Takwa and Pristia areas of the western region. I check heavy metal in, in the soil that is using that they are using to grow plantain, cassava, that they are using to grow cocoa and other subsistence farming practices that are being now a champion who absorb higher concentrations of arsenic, lead, titanium and copper into the roots and into the stem and into the into the leaves. 
Everyone says a sorry don't go with that report. And before we go, the 2024 Ecobank Joint News Habitat Fair will cover more regions. That is according to the general manager in charge of marketing at the multimedia group, David Max Fuga. Many patrons walked away with up to 70% discount on everything housing after the four-day event. Our first-time exhibitors say they are more than excited about patronage. Max Olagbagba has won this report. We came, we saw and enjoyed the big discounts on offer. With Comet's properties giving as much as 70% discounts on its serviced plots, our patrons were definitely spoiled for choice. Here are some of them. My name is Abuaji. It's much better than going from place to place in Accra with all the hustle and traffic and what have you. So it's a great show. My name is Tiuk, and you know, Joy Habitat Fair is a big fair. I've been coming every year, and it's a good thing. I love it. I, like I do every year, I've collected some few brochures, and uh, I've bought some few items too. Uh, do you like what you've seen here? Yes, I think I can have my own house. <laughs> ah, I like that. I like, that. I, like that. I have been an, an ardent follower of the Echo Bank Joy News Habitat Fair. I think from 2018, where it was organized at the Providence Event Centre at uh, Trade Fair. Following you. And Max Olagbagba with that report ending the bulletin in our top story, President Kufwado assures that the security agencies will be ready to deal with any trouble ahead of the 2024 general election. I am Amisi Nyamiche Thompson. Business is next on the Super Morning Show.